Women's institutes have been an important part of rural life in Ontario for more than 120 years. The Women's Institute movement started in Ontario in 1897 through the combined efforts of Erland and Janet Lee and Adelaide Hunter Hoodless. During a talk to the Farmers Institute in Stony Creek, Hoodless suggested that an organization like the Farmers Institute would be good for rural women. The next week, on February 19th, the very first meeting of the Women's Institute took place, and it was attended by 101 women. The stated objective of that first Women's Institute branch was to improve women's skills in the art of homemaking and childcare. From that one meeting in Stony Creek grew more and more gatherings in other communities. The idea of Women's Institute spread rapidly across Ontario, Canada, and beyond. By 1914, it was estimated that there were 30,000 members of the Women's Institute across Ontario, including 14 branches in Waterloo Region, starting with the first one in Winterburn in 1902. What was it like to attend a Women's Institute meeting in 1914? Many branches held their meetings in the homes of members, but others held them in a community building, such as a village hall. Typically, the monthly meeting was held in the afternoon around 2 p.m. and included a roll call, business, a lecture or demonstration by a guest or member, papers presented by the members, and sometimes there would be musical entertainment. Refreshments and social time were also part of the meeting. Each branch prepared their program plan for an entire year, listing the location, topic, and speakers. So what made the Women's Institute different from other women's organizations? As stated by one woman in 1912, This organization is strictly non-political and has as its aim the removal from its meetings of all creed, church, or social distinction. Admittedly, in 1914, this still meant members were white women who were connected to some Christian denomination, but it did provide some opportunities to get to know people one did not ordinarily meet, except in passing in the community. Members were usually women living in farms, villages, or even towns. The social aspects of attending Women's Institute meetings was just as important for many women as the educational content. A paper printed in the Canadian Home Journal stated, Some may think we attend the meetings just to have a good time. Well, what if we do? Are not the busy housewives and mothers entitled to at least one afternoon each month in which they can have a good time? We members of the Institute were not slow to recognize the fact that laughter has a mission to perform in this world. So the sparkle of wit and humor is not frowned upon, but rather is encouraged at our gatherings. In addition to the social and educational aspects of attending an institute meeting, each branch typically took on fundraising projects to benefit their communities. Fundraising efforts by the Women's Institute branches increased tremendously during the First World War, which started August 4, 1914. They knit socks, made sewing kits, sent care packages, and fundraised tirelessly for special equipment to benefit and comfort the soldiers, sailors, and eventually airmen. For some rural women, the Institute branch was a lifeline. If they were inexperienced at homemaking, childcare, or farm life, the monthly meetings gave them the information and contacts they needed. For other women, the Women's Institute gave them a chance to use their intelligence, their organizational skills, or public speaking ability. The original focus of domestic science education was expanded to include personal growth opportunities, government lobbying, and health and community wellness initiatives. In the mid-1930s, branches were encouraged to start keeping local history books, which became known as the Tweedsmere Village History Books. The branches in Waterloo Region have faithfully created and preserved these scrapbooks for many decades. At its peak in the 1950s, there were 31 branches in Waterloo Region. The Women's Institute still exists, but in smaller numbers. Currently, there are four active women's institutes in Waterloo Region, Bloomingdale, Branchton, Maple Grove, and New Dundee, and they continue to welcome new members and contribute to their communities. In 2015, the Women's Institutes of Ontario, Waterloo District, was inducted into the Waterloo Region Hall of Fame. The designation statement concludes with the following. 
For more than 100 years, the Women's Institute movement has grown into a global organization, operating in more than 60 countries, helping women assume leadership roles in their communities. So during Women's History Month, we want to acknowledge the important contributions made to local communities by all the members of Women's Institutes in Waterloo Region since 1902. Thank you.